This is the Bears Barroom Radio Network. Parental discretion is advised. There are so many streaming TV series. So many channels. I have a stream. I just don't know which one to watch. Is this show worth our time? I have a stream. I'm three seasons behind already. Is it even worth catching up? I have a stream. What's the series about? Well, my wife liked it too. I have a stream. What channel is it on? And who's in it? I have a stream. I want to watch something new, something original. I have a stream. I want to watch something that's action packed. I have a stream. What's happening, Barflies? This is John Santucci. Call me Tooch. This I Have a Stream podcast. With me, as always, is my sidekick, Joey Two Scoops, Joe Mandel. Joe, how you doing tonight? Doing well, brother. How, how goes it, man? It's nice to be back in the arena. It's doing this every week now. It's a lot of fun. I love going live. A lot of fun, and we are recapping the Battle of Winterfell. I can't wait. What a great episode. Oh, yeah. First, Joe, I got to order a drink. That's right. All those says drinks are on the house. Good evening, fellas. What can I get for you? Oh, Brandon Janoski. <laughs> How you doing, How's buddy? It? Doing pretty well. How about you guys? Welcome to I Have a Stream. Welcome to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have my regular, Brandon. You know what it is. Bourbon on the rocks? That's Bourbon. right. <laughs> I got you. And what are you getting? Mm. Let me think. As as I'm drinking it already, but uh, I think I'm going to take a, a, a Michelob Ultra. And I think I see you drinking the same thing on the other side. 2.6 carbs. Got to keep this figure skater's body. <laughs> hey, there you go, man. It does the job. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm. All right. <laughs> Joe, uh, man, let's get down to it. Let's bring in our first guest, man. Super special guest tonight. Welcome him, Barroom yeah. Style. Barroom Style. He's Bears Barroom's man on the streets. He's everyone's favorite bricklayer slash cinematographer. He'll crush you with his super strong hands. Unless it's 420 and then he's got other plans. He's Greg Braggs Jr. <laughs> there he is, Greg Braggs Jr. in the house. The introduction. Oh, man, that is the great Dan Aguirre, the voice of Bears Barroom, and, and me, of course, writing the, uh, the intro. But, uh, Greg, how are you doing? Welcome to I Have a Stream. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, man, yeah, relax, have fun. What, can you, what are you drinking? Well, you don't go to a bar and, and don't see either a bottle of Jack or Jack Day, Jack and Coke in my hand. But if we're in the bar, I guess I'll keep it classy and order a Jack and Coke. Mm. How so about Jack that? and Coke, you got it. Nice. Nice. Oh. All right. So, there's Barroom. I have a stream. And we're going to do what are you watching and how's it going for you, Greg? So, tell us what you're watching right now besides Game of Thrones. Thrones, of course, and uh, t- recommend something for I Have a Stream podcast listeners. Well, I mean, honestly, as most most of you know, Game of Thrones has pretty much taken over my life the last month. But prior to that, if I had to recommend anything, it would definitely be Ozarks. That was uh, me and my wife got through that right before, and it was excellent, excellent. You know, as someone that enjoys kind of the ba- Breaking Bad genre of television shows this one kind of has that same feel to it and um a real high excitement level always keeping you on the edge of your seat kind of switches you up and it's hard to hard to 
guess what's going to happen next. So it's definitely a show I would recommend. If I had to recommend a movie, man, uh, the one that sticks out for me that really just was unique and didn't have that many uh, well-known actors in it was this movie called The Stanford Experiment. And uh, I can't tell you for sure if it's streaming on Netflix still or not. I guess I should have looked into that. But that's where I saw it originally. And this movie is crazy. It it depicts this uh, true story. It's actually a true story about these kids that tried this experiment for what jail would be like in at school and they shut the yeah. whole building down and and simulated what a what a prison would be like for for not just the the prisoners but for the jail guards and they assigned kids to do both of these jobs and this this show or this movie it just kind of takes you into a different world because it shows kind of like what human nature is all about and it really grabs you because you're watching this and kind of putting yourself in that position on both sides of the spectrum. And it, and to know that it's a true story and actually happened to some of these people. And, and I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but when you watch this movie and see where it goes, you, you just won't believe your eyes that something like this actually happened. It, it's an amazing movie. I would definitely recommend. Right. The jailers get a little power hungry. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Unreal. <laughs> and, that, and there's a particular one that plays a guard. The he he gets under your skin. He he lives with you the, like the rest of the week. He kind of <laughs> plays his role so well. He so I mean hats off to them. But man, you feel for the kids that actually went through that. But uh, you know, without giving too much away, that is something I would definitely recommend. Right, and Ozark, of course, a great series. We've talked about that in our pilot episode with Jeremiah Panhorst, uh, Marty Bird character, great character, oh, and. Then, Ruth, uh, I forget the last name, but Ruth was a great character, too. And the, uh, Wendy, the wife, Wendy Bird. Man, great show. Can't recommend it enough, Ozark. Brandon, how about you? Tell us what you're watching and how's it going for you. Um, so with movies, TV show series, food, anytime you have a girlfriend, there's a big input there. So um, those are the two hardest decisions, right? What are, what are we eating and what are we watching? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you could say you want to watch whatever you want to watch, but you're going to watch what the, what the lady wants to watch. Dilly, so dilly. for me, <laughs> you probably, <laughs> right. You probably, uh, if you have HBO, you're, you're listening to this because you watch game of Thrones. Uh, I watch Barry on HBO. Sure. That show is outstanding. That's so, what I was on my list. It's so good. Uh, she kind of talked me into it, the usual, uh, and then we started watching it. And it's this hitman who goes soft, basically. Bill Hader, uh, right? Yep, there you go. Exactly. Right. And he's, I've always liked him. Like, he does good work. He's usually in, like, funnier stuff. Yeah, um, Saturday Night Live, great. He was yep. great on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> it is hard to kind of remove him from that. But I think in this role, he does. He does a really good job. Um, but he has this big hit job. He goes to L.A., gets kind of soft, and, and starts, you know, falling for this girl. Just a really good watch, really entertaining, something that doesn't make you fall asleep at night after work. Uh, I like it a lot. So that would be my uh, recommendation for TV show right now. But Nice. Um, uh, two scoops. Uh, anything uh, Anything you're watching and how's it going for you? I do, man. I've, I've got one that it's been on Hulu for a long time. And it kind of was on Hulu before Hulu got big, in my opinion. Uh, it's called 112263, and this is a show starring James Franco. Uh, it's about when he goes back in time and tries to stop the Kennedy assassination. Oh, wow. It is unbelievable, really good. It'll have you on the edge of your seat, and uh, it's a show that I want. I just finished it, and I, I want to watch it again. So if anyone hasn't seen it, it came out before all those big Hulu shows. Uh, it's a heck of a watch, and you're going to love it. Nice. Well, I am. I actually was watching uh, a couple shows on Netflix. One I watched with my uh, two little girls. It's called Our Planet, and man, it's really good. It's you know, it's a nature uh, documentary series, and uh, there was one scene where uh, these crazy ass birds in Africa do this like mating dance while the female's on a branch above and this one's got some crazy feathers that's like makes like a circle looks like a hand it's got these things on its head and my little daughter was going nuts she was laughing so hard and then the other one i'm watching is called street food and i can tell you brandon if you want you combine your tv show with your girlfriend and food put on street food it's like tells a story of uh 
The first one I watched was a, a, a lady in Bangkok who had a little uh, stall on the streets and uh, was became a one-star Michelin chef or, uh, cooking nice. Thai food, man. And, and her story is incredible. And all the dishes that she cooked were amazing, looked awesome. And uh, it's a great story of how she struggled to get uh, from a little food cart to a uh, restaurant now in Bangkok, Thailand. And there's uh, that's just the first episode I started. And uh, I definitely enjoyed it. It's different. It's not, uh, see, the, the two ones I watched, of course, are two documentary ones. So, uh, Joe, uh, what do you say we do some TV confessional and let the boys unburden themselves? Uh, I think that could probably be arranged if I could find the drop, but I think here it is. Confess! 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 I confess! Not you! I confess! Who was that? Well, I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Shame! 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 The shame is so strong in me, guys. I, I've kind of gone off the deep end the last couple of weeks, but uh, I see Tucha's face is frozen, so I'm not sure if he's there or not. But this is the part of the show where we kind of talk about our TV confessionals and things that you maybe, in in the grand scheme of things, maybe you shouldn't be watching or you shouldn't be expected to be watching. But it's a guilty pleasure. It's a show that, you know what, I'm going to say it loud. I watch this show. And if you guys weren't paying attention, two weeks ago I said say yes to the dress. And last week I said keeping up with the Kardashians. So you guys got to keep up with that. So I'm going to throw it to Bragg's first. Greg, what is your confession? <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought up the Kardashians because, you know, I guess I wasn't sure if we were going to limit it to streaming shows or TV shows, but... As Janowski said, when you got a wife or a girlfriend, that dictates some of the stuff you have to watch. And I have to admit, me and her, we get into uh, Vanderpump Rules in this oh. house. And it's uh, appointment television, just like the Chicago Bears are on Sundays. And it also <laughs> it spills into Below Deck in the off season of Vanderpump. But Vanderpump's the, the main event in this house. And uh, it's currently going on right now. And it's basically just a show of a bunch of hot people that get into <laughs> a lot of drama and everyone's fighting and it's kind of like you hate watch it because you kind of trying to decide who who you hate the most but then there's like this one like beautiful flower within the the evilness with this girl from uh the midwest that shouldn't be there with all these people it's a it's a funny show it's it's kind of like real world was when you're when we were younger but you know, um, kind of the new age, and you you see what some of the younger generation is getting into, and you're almost glad you're you're out of the club and game. Yeah. And you see some of this craziness, but it it's definitely our guilty pr pleasure in the Bragg's household. Because well, I'll be sitting there one. like, how am I watching this? And then the then for the other half of the show, I'm like locked in arguing with her about who who's more important to the show. <laughs> All right, uh, Brandon. Anything to confess uh, while you're on? I have a stream. I don't know. I mean, I maybe uh, our girls were in the same sorority or something because she watches Vanderpump Rules and uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and I get to hate Kanye more and more when I used to love him in there Chicago. Go. I mean, you, you gotta love him. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the same two ones. So we we're keeping it going with the the Kardashians here. Um, it's tough for me to watch, even though I, I really can't, I don't know. I can't fathom all the attention they get. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. it <laughs> big, big butts in Kanye West. That, I mean, that that's entertaining, I guess. Um, but that's, that's about it. The, the same stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, when you, when, uh, when you get to be, uh, my age and all those age, you get an appreciation for the, uh, big butts. <laughs> the big butts, yeah. <laughs> Tooch likes big butts and he cannot lie. <laughs> but even my wife will watch this garbage and some of these shows are just insane, like dance so moms and, and things <laughs> like that. And I'll be like, Jenny, you're like, I'm the idiot of this house. I'll be like, Jenny, you're an educated woman. Like, why are you watching this? She's like, I just want to watch something 
where I don't have to use my brain. And so yep. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes this sense. Is brainless television. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Also, uh, go ahead, Brandon. Oh, two scoops. Do we not have a drop for Bangkok? I was sadly uh, disappointed. That uh, you don't have that in there. <laughs> uh, no, I got the, I, this, this. I've got my uh, my typical drop though. I, that's a better. What better place for this than here? Holy smokes! Oh. Let, let's hear. Holy smokes! <laughs> <laughs> How about we go to some second chance series, Joe? Yeah, let's let's do that. Uh, do you have a visitor at your house yet, Tooch, or should we jump right into second chance series? Uh, could do second chance series. I don't, she hasn't showed up yet, and then uh, 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 I'll, I'll try and text her and see if uh, my sultry neighbor is ready to drop by. Sure thing. In, so the bar room. It's time for second chance series. Don't give up. Oh, I love me some big star. Uh, Greg, how about a series that you started watching, you gave up on, but you came back to and you were glad you did? Dang, that's a tough one. Oh, man. You know, I mean, I guess originally, the, the now it's kind of hilarious that it even came to this, but originally it was The Office. Now I've watched this show nine million times, so it's... Uh, but honestly, when it when when I first started, I watched the first season, and it was just like, eh. And then I came back to it like seven years later, and somebody was like, oh no, it got so much better. And uh, you know, <laughs> before you knew it, I'm now I've probably watched it fifteen times over. But you know, that's that's an obvious one. I think everybody's watched that show. I hate to give you oh, yeah. a, a worse answer. I mean, if you want to take a couple shows that I should get back on the horse. That I haven't that I've done like that. And one is two different genres. What one we got through the first season of Godfather and we could not pick it back up because it just felt like such a daunting task. So many episodes to get get to the end. And then uh, for me, Parks and Rex, I got through the first season of that and I never I never went back to it. And I don't know why because I, I enjoy all the people that are on that show and I just haven't. So maybe maybe one of you guys can convince me of one of those shows to get back to. All right. Uh, Brandon, how about you? Any second chance series? I'm going to do kind of a spin on it. So The Leftovers. Has anybody watched yeah, that? That was mine. My second okay. chance series. <laughs> so The Leftovers. I watched the first season. Yeah. I was hooked. I was like, this is ah. great. Um, second. Does it go second season? I think there were three or four. I think three I think that, seasons. Yeah. So one and three, two, yeah, three. I was they were kind of losing me at the end of two. I watched three, and they completely let me down again. <laughs> and then, and then I watched it four, and I was like, "This is still bad." So the <laughs> one and two on leftovers, I would encourage people to watch that, I guess. But it was disappointing to me at the end. I don't know how you felt, but I was like, it, it just kind of lost its steam. It was so intriguing and interesting, and then they just let me down. So mine's kind of the opposite of second chance. Don't yeah, give it a second chance. I, uh, <laughs> I, I gave it a second chance. Man, I was really glad I did. I really uh, I loved the characters, and because uh, like like I said in the pilot episode, I was this is what is this crap with these people in white jumpsuits? <laughs> I was like, I just didn't get it. Then uh, you know I read a little bit more into it some of my friends were like ah oh, come back you'll love it and you know it's by the people who did lost and you know mm -hmm. I, I was glad i did there was one episode man that was one of the best hours of tv ever uh you know made me laugh made me cry a bunch of stuff very yeah. good and uh hey joe i uh i, I sh my sultry neighbor has just walked into the bar room she has yeah let's give shay a welcome let's give her the bar room welcome that we all know she loves and deserves <laughs> Real estate professional by day, a Chardonnay sipping, streaming TV series fan by night. She's Tooch's sultry neighbor. Give it up for Shay Beck. Can I get some booty? Can I have some sweetness? Can I see your beauty? Can we get down on the floor? Oh, 
Oh, Shay. Hey. How's it going? Say it's hi going to fantastic. Greg and Brandon. Hey, guys. How's it going tonight? <laughs> Good, Shay. What What can I get you to drink? Yeah. You know, I'm in the mood for a nice, fine Chardonnay. Oh, uh, your favorite. Uh, we'll, My yeah, favorite. we'll get you the finest. Mm. It's, it's on Aldo anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fingers Boone's crossed. Farm. I'm sure I... I I expect to get a bill, though, you know. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> expense report. Send it in for the expense report. <laughs> well, well, Joe and I will expense uh, the bar tab. <laughs> yeah, it's on me tonight, guys. It's on me. Oh, all right. Good. Wow, generous. Nice. Yeah, I'm picking it nice, up. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, we are getting ready to talk Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 3, The Battle of Winterfell with, with the boy Shay. Uh, I know you're excited to talk... Uh, Game of Thrones, but first let's uh, let's get the news in two scoops or less. Yeah, I think it's time for that. I love giving the news, and I'm actually going to do the drop this week, Tooch, because I forgot last week. So here we go. <laughs> what? You look like Mary Poppins. Is he cool? Hell yeah, he's cool. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? It's entertainment news in two scoops or less. Holy smokes! And now it's time for the news in two scoops or less. So, you know, I'm going to keep it short this week, gentlemen, but there's been quite a bit of streaming news this week, and... Uh, one of them is going to piggyback off of the biggest film opening of all time. That's right. For anyone who lives under a rock, uh, Avengers Endgame opened this weekend to a $1.2 billion box office, setting the biggest worldwide opening of all time. And how does this relate to streaming, you might ask? Well, Disney Plus, the new streaming service from Disney, has announced that they will have three Marvel shows uh, coming in the near future. One of them being about Loki. There's no title to that show. Uh, the wow. other one the other one is called WandaVision, about the Scarlet Witch and Vision. And the last one, and definitely not least, is called Winter Soldier and Falcon, chronicling mm. the adventures of uh, those two guys. So that's going to be a heck of a lineup, and you add that on to The Mandalorian, the Star Wars show coming to Disney+. Plus. And then you have yourself uh, all the Marvel films and Disney films, so that's going to be a heck of a heck of a bargain right there. Seven dollars a month, I believe, or seventy dollars for the year. So you're going to want to sign up for that launching, I believe, on November twelfth. So that's a big one right there, boys and and, wow. la- and lady. And then I've got one more to talk nice. about here. Wow. Yes, I've got one more to talk about here, and that's HBO has announced a couple new big films that are going to be available for subscribers to watch either on demand or on HBO on the channel. And the two big movies are A Star is Born and Crazy Rich Asians. So if you've not seen either of those films, those Academy Award-nominated films will be coming to HBO, so you can stream it anytime you want. I believe they get added at the end of May. So that's going to be a, a heck of a lineup to check out. And for everyone listening, that is the news in two scoops or less. Oh, man. Boy, is that, is that Loki uh, with Tom Hiddleston? Tom Hiddleston, yes. We'll be reprising. Oh, man. All of, the char- all of the actors from the movies will be reprising their roles. So Very that's going to cool. be fantastic. Nice. Excellent. All right. So, Joe, uh, how about a word from our sponsor of the our Game of Thrones segment? Sure. Here we go. A word from our sponsor. What are we going to do about all these dead bodies here at Winterfell, Sir Two Scoops? I will send a raven out to one of the companies, milady. At Westeros Dead Body Disposal, we specialize in post-battle cleanup, dead body disposal, and cremation of White Walkers. Send the raven to Westeros Dead Body Disposal. We offer Iron Bank financing, and you won't find a better price. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. What a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, thank, 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 thankfully that they're they're helping they're helping us over here. They might have to dispose of a few more bodies after next week. But <laughs> with that segue, why don't we just jump right into it? Oh, let's go. Not 
what do we say to the god of death, Joe? Not today. Not today, <laughs> that's right. And uh, Game of Thrones, Season 8, Episode 3, The Battle of Winterfell. What an epic episode. And we found out that it was Arya with the cat's paw dagger in the godswood, if you're playing uh, Game of Thrones Clue. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if... Uh, the, the, uh, Greg, do you remember? Uh, I mean, you've watched the series recently. You've watched every episode along with Shay. Do you remember how uh, Arya got the dagger? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna lie. You know, social media has been so good at pointing some of these things out uh, with with uh, Bran handing him the dagger. But uh, yeah. certainly, uh, kind of amazing how they're able to foreshadow in that way with a lot of stuff dating even further back like i said as as people a lot smarter than me have pointed out but yeah it has been an incredible ride trying to get literally got through all these episodes in a four week span with with a wife and a kid at home to take care of so it, it was a journey but it's been a lot of fun and uh that was an incredible moment with aria right man i'll never i know barkeeper tweeted out a great picture uh, I, I saved that one to my phone. That's just a classic TV moment with Arya popping into frame uh, right over the uh, Night King's uh, right shoulder. And what a great TV moment, man. What a great TV moment. Uh, Shay, you've also, you're like Greg, you've also watched every episode recently in the past few weeks. Uh, actually, Shay, you call it that it was going to be Arya getting close to uh, the Night King, you know, kind of everybody who had been kind of thinking uh, Jon Snow would be the one to take out the big bad guy. Uh, and he tried. He was pinned down by a dragon. And we got a great TV moment. What'd you think uh, when Arya... Uh, did she, Ar Arya ran a play action, Greg. <laughs> so we, we didn't have your camera in the godswood. But uh, Arya, ran, Arya ran a play fake. And uh, how'd you feel after Arya took out the bad guy? No, that was great. Oh, cause... Wonderful. I mean, that was great. I kind of knew she was going to do it in the first place. Right. I, I should have bet something in Vegas. I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> Shay she knows all. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, uh, great TV moment. Uh, Aria, you know, the were we, were we faked out by uh, everybody kind of thinking Jon Snow was the hero and we got, uh, we got the unlikely hero, uh, T talk about that for a second. Yeah, for me, uh, I did not. I'm not going to act like I knew Arya was going to do it. I definitely did not. Um, I thought Jon Snow, it just made sense. He's been the hero for so long. But uh, I, for I completely forgot that she had ran away, period, until when she says not today and then she runs off. So I forgot about that. I didn't even think about where she was. And then... I was pretty intense when uh, the Night King rose the White Walkers when Jon Snow was sitting there. I was about to square up with my with my TV um, and fight some White Walkers with Jon Snow, but I did not did not think that that was happening at all. And then I also thought she was gonna die when he grabbed her. So when she dropped the knife, I was in suspense the whole time. That was not who I thought it was, uh, not at all. So right. I was completely shocked. And Joe, uh, if you were like me, you jumped up and down on your couch screaming hooray. Uh, your reaction to Arya taking out the bad guy? I got up and I kind of did like a big punch in the air that didn't connect with anything. And uh, I just kind of was like screaming into a pillow for a second. I was pretty pumped up about it because I went from like a roller coaster of emotions and and spoiler alert if you're this far in the show and you and you didn't watch Game of Thrones well too fucking bad <laughs> um, <laughs> but but uh I was you know I was like oh my god Arya's going to die oh my god oh my god this can't happen and then boop fake see and and for any of you guys watching you know where she learned that move from right that little switcheroo that was from the one of the faceless men lessons uh with the distraction, and I was like, "Oh, yep. what lesson a lesson number one! Lesson number mm -hmm. one! What lesson a number sweet, one. what a sweet throwback to that!" And right. uh, I was just so pumped up, I just couldn't sleep after that. And I'll tell you, uh, like, like all of the uh, Game of Thrones episode music plays a big part, and that nice 
slow, uh, the nice uh, suspenseful music. Uh, Raman Jawadi's score was brilliant. It was all kind of brought me back to uh, when uh, uh, Cersei blew up the uh, the the, uh, the the sept of Baylor, and uh, her cousin was crawling, you know, hamstrung. You know, on the floor to try and put the candles out before the the wildfire uh, blew up the sept. Almost the same music, uh, and I was also struck with how quiet it was in the beginning of the uh, episode before the battle. So quiet, no music at all, and really built up the suspense. And uh, we called it last week too. We thought that the Red Lady would come back, uh, Joe. Uh, What'd you? Th- how'd you feel when Melisandre uh, returned, and did you have her in the Deadpool? <laughs> well, <laughs> my first reaction was, "How the hell did she get around all those White Walkers?" <laughs> I'm like, "She where, just question. poof out of nowhere." Um, but of course, I'm like, "Okay, is she here for good or bad?" That was my main reaction, and and of course, setting all the Dothraki swords on fire that was a pretty badass shot. Uh, yes. But but to answer your question, yes, I had her in the Deadpool. I had her dying. And I was correct, but uh, well, we can d- dive a little bit into it later. But the the, right. the conversation she had with Arya, I thought was really intriguing, and we'll dig to that in a little bit. But uh, right. long story short, how the hell did she get around all those White Walkers, man? Right now, the uh, she lights the Dothraki's uh, swords on, and then of course uh, you have that great shot with all of the uh, the lights going out, you know, and uh, some horses coming back riderless. Uh, Sir Jorah coming back, and he had a wild look on his face. I actually thought Sir Jorah was uh, a zombie at that point, but uh, it was just yeah. battle phased. Um, and uh, I'm not sure about the plan, Greg, <laughs> that they had to send the Dothraki out there into a, you know, into the dark without any kind of uh, surveillance first. It kind of uh, seemed like a waste of the uh, the Dothraki screamers. <laughs> What do you think about the plan? I don't know. I was kind of against the plan, but yeah, as I said on Twitter, uh, let's hope the battle versus Cersei is a noon kickoff because it, the 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 nighttime was a tough one, you know. For I guess some viewers, I was smart enough to turn the lights off in my house, and then the viewing was fine. Uh, I think that's just the key. I don't know how anybody could watch a show like that with the with lights on. You know, I maybe a little light on, but. You know, you guys hit the nail on the head. The, like you said, Tooch, the music that was to me the 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 moment of the show. That's what made that show uh, last night was the music to me, hands down. And uh, and then, like you said, the lights at the beginning, the way they all went out, because you were able to see you, everything's so dark, and you kind of appreciate that because that's what they're going up against. I guess is how they're trying to depict it. But then to see them all go out was a really profound moment in the show. So I, I completely agree with both those thoughts, Tooch. Right. Now, uh, some people, uh, of course, were complaining that, and I, I'm kind of one of them, were complaining that, uh, for the most part, this episode was really dark, you know, as far as lighting. You know, it was really hard to see stuff. Uh, uh, Shay, did you find it hard to see in the uh, of uh, this episode? Yeah, I wish I would have been smarter and turned the lights off. <laughs> well, I, uh, I think I, the whole time I'm like, "What? What's going on? What's going on?" Yeah, it was hard to see. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, we'll have to wait till the Blu-ray comes out. Maybe we'll get a better uh, a better edit. I know uh, the barkeeper sent me some info about how maybe they they were either trying to cover up some CGI or they just uh, had better monitors than the average person, so it really looked dark. Brandon, did you find? Uh, Find it to be a little dark and hard to see at times. Um, I don't think so. I think I had the same idea. I had all the lights off in the house, and TV depicted everything well. But I think at the same time, a lot of people are missing that it was supposed to be dark and chaotic to a certain point. That that's you know, it's dark because. That's how it would be fighting at night in basically a snowstorm. So I think that that was part of it, but I could see things very clearly. Um, And then kind of going back to what you said, maybe John Fox was behind that game plan to send in the Doth Rockies there. (laughs) But (laughs) but, uh, (laughs) I I don't know. I think I could see everything pretty well. Um, 
I was shocked when they went in. I don't know if I'm the only person who thought it, but I thought when the Death Rockies hit that wall, essentially, and all the lights went out, I thought that there was elephants there. I didn't know that it was like the giant. I th- it just looked like a huge wall with something massive. Yeah, so I was did. like, oh, they have elephants. What the hell just happened? And I, I was pretty lost and i also thought that uh he was a zombie when he came back as well um so jorah. So, yeah so jorah i right. was like that, that what is going on here i almost thought when everybody when the horses started coming back that they were they were white walkers as well but that yeah threw me for a loop for yeah. sure to your original point too too and maybe i didn't answer that question right but like they, the, i enjoyed the strategy that their thought process put into it it may not have like like you said that maybe they should have had a better one during the daylight, but I thought it was really cool how they really broke down the different levels of how the strategy against them and then how they fell back and you know you've got the unsullied holding the line as they come through the door and like each one of those steps is what won the battle because if they don't hold it that long, Arya doesn't have enough time to get out of the castle to do her thing and. So that part of it was actually uh, one of the one of the parts I actually really appreciated because it seemed like they put a lot of thought process into that. Right now, uh, the whole plan hinged on uh, using Bran as bait, and that ended up to be the right play. Uh, I know some people kind of uh, the, actually during the show, some people I guess not really didn't really seem like they thought it was a good plan, like leaving the crippled guy out in the you know out in the open. With Theon guarding him. We kind yeah, of I mean, I hate to week. I hate to be critical of like what everyone is, uh, you know, cheering as one of the greatest shows ever. But yeah, that's one thing that disappoints me. And I, there's a list of them if I really got into it. But at the end, like Bran was supposed to be bait, and I just felt like with the way Arya killed him, that really wasn't planned. And I thought it would have been kind of cooler if when he came in, that it felt more like they lured him to that. And, and so and Arya coming to him was luck because she got out of things they didn't necessarily. It didn't seem like that was something they planned, and I, I wanted it to. I wanted it to feel like the night they got the knight's goat there, and well, regardless, the end result was the right way. But I thought they could have played that up a little more that that where they actually tricked him, because like, what did Bran actually do? He just like he he. he he just fell asleep and started flying around as a bird for the whole episode. He didn't actually <laughs> do anything. He didn't even. They didn't even use him as bait. Like yeah. I, you know what I mean? Aside from being the furthest back of the line. <laughs> yeah, we saw him go out as three ravens flying through the storm, but uh, it never went any further than that. He, did, I don't know if he reported to anybody. At least they didn't show it. But uh, yeah, Bran kind of was just waiting there to die in case you know, John didn't come to rescue him or Arya didn't come through with the uh, you know the fake out. But uh, the, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, scene in the Godswood was one of the great uh, scenes, of course, with Theon's last moments. And, of course, uh, Bran gives him the, uh, you know, the redemption, you know, your, your, your home with you're your family. A, you're this a was good your family man. The whole time, everything you did led you to this moment. You're a good man. And that was uh, all Theon needed to hear. Uh, how'd you feel when uh, Theon, uh, Shay, how'd you feel when Theon... Uh, you know, uh, went down and uh, protected Bran to the very end. Well, I'm not a big Theon fan. I don't think he made redemption. No, do you I think don't, uh, Alfie I don't, Allen is cute, yeah. though? And I certainly don't believe yeah. he could have killed that many White Walkers. Is, is mean, Theon he... uh, attractive? No. No? Okay. No. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about Jon Snow? Yes. Okay. <laughs> he's he's taken we think we'll talk about that later but uh yeah uh great uh you know of course we we got some deaths horse uh, house mormont took uh took a few losses um uh, little liana joe uh that was a great scene i mean i know uh she she pretty she pretty much got the biggest death uh of the uh of the night uh were you yeah. cheering when when uh the little girl took on the dragon uh, I was cheering when she took out the giant. Yeah, I mean the giant. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was that was. Something I meant giant. Else. She's she's a little feisty one. That's what you call a badass right there. And yeah, she was. That was probably one of the top moments of the show, man. And that that and when she opened her eyes, then they turned blue. That was pretty cool too. How about that? We forgot to include yeah. we forgot to include her in our Deadpool. Right, I know. A mistake, my mistake. Uh, yeah, that would have been uh, some points there. We also lost Dolorous Ed, 
who also became a, a, a White Walker. Of course, he uh, he helped Sam escape on the ramparts from uh, White Walkers. And we call that one, he was on our list last week, Joe, uh, was Dolorous Ed. We also had Grey Worm, who lives to fight another day. We had yeah. Sir Jorah, who also left, uh, di- died uh, uh, protecting his queen, a woman who would not return uh, the love that he had for her, you know, <laughs> strictly platonic for, uh, how'd, how'd you feel uh, about Sir Jorah protecting his queen, Shay? He's probably one of my favorite characters. Yeah, he's a handsome I mean, he's, older guy. He's a handsome older guy, but he's he's good. He's Batman. Is he Batman, Joe? He will be Batman in the DC, Batman, yeah. the DC <laughs> Universe Titans Season 2. So right. if, you, if you're on that I streaming service... I think she should have given him a kiss on the lips at the yeah. very end while he's dying. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. Did anybody else think that she was about to kiss him? I definitely uh, thought that was yeah, happening. Yeah, I did too. I did too. Yeah, yeah Batman's Batman's that would have punched him in the back of the head. It's <laughs> Yeah, Batman doesn't die in the friend zone. (laughs) (laughs) No doubt. Nice. Nice. So uh, going through, we had, uh, we kind of talked about, uh, we we, kind of talked about how we thought the crypts wouldn't be the safest place, Joe, offline. And it turned out to be true when when, uh, the Night King raised the dead for a second time. And uh, at that point, I had kind of like, Jesus, I thought... uh, I kind of got to the point where I was like, everybody's going to die mm-hmm. because now, not only do they have to fight the first wave, but now they have to fight all their own soldiers who also just died. Yeah. So, I, and uh, the Hound kind of uh, voiced my sentiment when he was talking with Sir Beric, and Sir Beric was like, "We need you." He's like, "We're fighting death, you stupid whore." <laughs> <laughs> great line, and of course, uh, they broke up the battle with uh, one great uh, scene, which I call the the library. Arya uh, running throughout the the library, and uh, man, that was a great scene. It was uh, it broke up like the tense battle action, uh, and you had the nice uh, suspense where Arya was hiding from multiple White Walkers. She 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 was probably concussed after taking a sh- you know someone threw her into and she hit her head into the uh, side of a of the wall castle wall, and. Uh, she got to use her the weapon that Gendry made for her until it finally ran out, and she uh, was saved by the Hound, who uh, who carried her out like a football, Brandon. So uh, the Hound, it took him a while to get going, but he saved the day by bringing Arya out of that library. What don't you think? Uh, it's pretty controversial for me. I I was like. I mean, I think we all had the same thought when he's sitting there and he's like, you're, you're fighting a de- against death, you whore. That was really funny. Um, but it was, it took the moment. It's like, it is what it is. And I think that's where everybody was. We're sitting there like, this is over. Like, everybody's going to die. Um, yep. He redeemed himself. I think the, something that a lot of people are forgetting about is when who's the guy who they bring back to life a bunch of times? I'm Beric. so terrible with names. This show. Beric. Yep, the okay. lightning lord with the flaming sword. Yeah, and he has the one eye. Um, they When they didn't bring him back, and the red lady says, you know, he served his purpose. I think that was pretty crazy with that whole scene, but as far as the hound redeeming himself, I I think it's it's tough. I mean, obviously, he's the part of the reason why everything went down and Arya yeah. got to do what she did, but him sitting there for that long kind of pissed me off. Well, yeah, he and Beric <laughs> served their purpose. Beric was uh, Beric was there to get Arya to where she had to be, and that's the Godswood, after uh, Melisandre told him. That goes back to Season 3, Episode 6, where uh, Melisandre goes to visit the Brotherhood Without Banners, which is where Arya is uh, hanging around. And... Uh, they have a little conversation. Melisandre says, I see a darkness in your eyes. You know, you'll extinguish blue eyes and brown eyes and green eyes. You know, and uh, she gives her that same line that allows her to get out and take care of business with that fake out, Greg. So uh, <laughs> we, we lost Beric. That was one we had on our list, too, Joe. Yes, sir. Uh, now, the, uh, some people are saying the night in the chat room, Ben Alexander says the Night King uh, was unhurt by the fire and i'm kind of not surprised by that because to me the night king has like zero personality you know to me he's he's uh the grim reaper or satan you know you don't expect something like that 
you know, the force of evil. Jay Cutler. Really, <laughs> <laughs> to have a uh, to have a, a personality like that. So uh, I wasn't too. Uh, I was. I mean, the Dyke King has been the terror since season one, episode one, and it's finally gone. And we'll talk about that. Where well, where does everyone go from here? With the remaining questions. Too but true. before, yes, real quick before we move on. Yep. The, does does the Night King surviving the fire confirm him to be a Targaryen? Ah, uh, great question. Uh, and and I, you know, I thought that John was going to take on some fire too and find out, uh, you know, that he was going to be fireproof like Daenerys, right? Shakes Daenerys is uh, mm. flame proof. It just uh, just burns her clothes off, which is good for us. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, does anybody, Joe? Uh, sorry, Greg. Uh, do you think? Uh, <laughs> and we talked about the music in the Godswood, and the Night King sure took a long time to get to Bran. He was trying to drag out that, you know, <laughs> drag out the scene, kind of like a James Bond villain, you know, yep. where a lot of talking, you know, a lot of menacing, and then forgets to take care of business. Yeah, you know? not but, impressed with the right. freaking Night King. Right. He, he's standing there, 10 feet from Jon Snow. We have been waiting for this for eight seasons. And he, and he raises the dead like a punk. Come on. <laughs> At least fight him for a minute, and it, you know, and then raise the dead. Like, yeah, give uh, us give us something. And then he just turns around and walks. Punk yeah. moved by the he, Night King. He, he got he what knew. was coming to him. He knew. He, he, uh, John, John, uh, John Snow was Khalil Mack coming on the Blitz. He was like, nope, I'm sending in extra blockers. But, uh, <laughs> right, so, uh. After uh, after the Night King's gone, of course, uh, the the big bad baddie has to be Cersei, don't you think, Shay? Well, yeah. Yeah. The, everybody's got to turn our attention to Cersei. Uh, does Cersei have uh, her plan? Her plan's looking pretty good now. Uh, she's got an army. We don't know how how many how much uh, men John and Danny have. They've got two full grown dragons, but Cersei's uh, waiting out the. Uh, Waiting out the battle up north, her plan's looking pretty good, don't you think? Just seems after what they went through, like yeah. how can't we kick her ass? Do you think uh, Cersei makes it through uh, Game of Thrones alive? No. No. How about you, Greg? You think Cersei uh, lives to see uh, the end, or she's got to die, right? <laughs> yeah, not at all. Cersei is going down, and it's going to be a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like on to the business of things because the White Walkers. I just, I would, I just want to get to Cersei. That she has pissed me off for so many seasons now, and we find we got Joffrey down, we got Lord Baelish down, and these are some of the most hateable characters this show's ever had. But Cersei has made it out of all of it, and so it's ready for her. And now it's only down to who's gonna do the deed because we got Arya; she had the list, and yep. but I personally want to see Jaime Lannister put the knife in her. You know, she didn't have her brother's back when he went to war against the undead, and that's karma. And she's lying about being able to pay her debt. She ain't got no more money, and she ain't got no baby either. She's lying about that, too. <laughs> and when all she, that comes to head, it's it's time for Cersei to go down. The, o the only army she sent north were her two brothers, yeah. the, Lann the Lannister army. Brandon, do you... Uh... Does Cersei make it out of here alive, or uh, is there any kind of uh, uh, redemption for Cersei, or is she she uh, destined to be the uh, the end villain? I I think she's gone, but so follow me on this theory. Uh, my girlfriend and I kind of came up with this. We've we've seen it around a little bit. So remember, Bronn is supposed to kill Jaime and Tyrion, right? So with the, with the crossbow, yeah. So if Bronn kills Tyrion and then Arya kills Jaime, she could take his face and kill Cersei. So that's kind of something that I've thought was going to happen. Um, and then the, the witch that tells... She tells Cersei at the beginning, right? The right. you will die at the hand of your brother. Yep, the Valencar prophecy, and that right. and that all three of your kids will die, right? Mm-hmm. Well, so far, that's been true. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. I think. I mean, Arya might not kill Jamie now after everything that happened, 
Um, but I think my my thing still behind it is Braun kills Tyrion, Jamie kills Braun, Arya kills Jamie, takes face, kills mm. kills Cersei. That's I know that's a lot to follow, but no, that's, that's a. Where, I, I didn't go that far, but I had also said that Arya kills Cersei with Jamie's face to fulfill yes. the prophecy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, we talked about that, I think, in our pilot episode, Joe. Yeah. I, what do you I, think, Joe? Cersei's <clears throat> plan looking good. She's kind of odd. She's got to be number one in the power rankings right now, right, Joe? Uh, I'd say so. Too bad she doesn't have those elephants to help her out, but <laughs> um, uh, I think she has got a great plan going for her. You know, she's got some great joy power. She's got, yep. the, you know, the, the Iron Bank, the Golden Company. She's got a lot in her favor right now, but mm-hmm. uh, I, got, I got a theory that's a little outside of the box, Tooch, and this is yeah. something this is something I've been kind of stewing on for a little bit. I know we talked about a couple episodes ago about is Littlefinger really dead, right? Right. And, and you know, I have this theory and that Littlefinger is still alive based off of the conversation that we talked about when he was on screen passing the coin. Right. I, th- I think Littlefinger at some point killed Sansa... And took Sansa's face. Notice how good she's been at the game. Sansa Mm. has been so good at the game. Wow. And then Sansa gets to the throne at the end. And then he shows that he's Lord Baelish. How sick of an ending would that be? That would be sick, man. That would be really sick. Nobody would ever think of that. But you did. I mean, that is is really good, man. I I like it. That's that's what I'm looking for, personally, on these last three episodes. I want to see... I want more. And maybe, you know, that's just the... What's so great about this show is that I'm I'm asking for more with each of each of these final episodes, but you know, there's just so I just want some twists here that really hit me because uh, you know it's been a lot of fun, but you know it's Game of Thrones. I want to see the throne, you know, I want to see the fight for it. I want to see it change hands a couple times here. Right. And I know we only got three left, but you know, I just think that that that's gonna you know it's just gonna be really interesting to see how it finishes out. I'm excited that. That it's finishing with, you know, taking down the Lannisters and the Iron Throne as opposed to finishing with the White Walkers. I'm glad we've gotten that out of the way. I, I didn't see, like you were saying, too, I was about to give up when they raised them the second time. But, yeah, um, it's nice that it's over with. It, Arya deserves the throne after she did that. It used to be snow in my eyes, but now, yeah. in my opinion, Arya saved everyone. She deserves the throne. Now, I heard some talk about people like, how did Arya get by all those White Walkers? They didn't know. I think she was hiding in the tree the whole time. You know, it looked like she climbed the tree, and the White Walkers came, the Night King came, you know, and uh, and she was waiting. She had got got up into the tree, like, you know, she climbed. Mm-hmm. She's been a tree climber the whole the whole show since episode one. Well, did you so, notice? Did you notice her outfit though? It was kind of like White Walkery if you look yeah. back at the outfit. So she kind of blended in and. You know, there's. I wonder if she stole a face of a White Walker, perhaps. I'm, you know, yeah, not maybe. not 100% sure on that. But we actually have Ben Alexander in the chat room who said, right. uh, you know, and don't forget that, you know, someone's probably still coming after Arya. He thinks Arya is going to die at the hand of the faceless god. Mm. What do you guys wow. think? Wow. Wow, that would be cool, man. Yeah. I, mean, I like we, that. Yeah. We're still holding out hope to see her teacher from the, the Faceless Men turn out to be Jon Snow's dad which would be really cool you know uh, <laughs> what i mean what army are they going to acquire here or is it just going to be they're going to beat the odds you know or yeah. is the iron bank army going to switch sides is kind of that's kind of where my theory goes is that they're going to find out Jamie or uh, Cersei's lying about what money she's got to pay up pay that's back that's a real at. that's a real possibility because if you remember last season the dragons destroyed the Lannister gold Right. Uh, Danny and her dragons came out. You know that was when Jamie uh, almost died. He was trying to shoot down Danny, and uh, Bron was saved by Bron. You've got uh, Theon's yeah. sister still, and out that there. too. And Tooch, real quick, that theory that you just mentioned was actually brought up to us uh, on Twitter from our friend Frankie Myers Chachi. Yes. So yep. credit the Chachi for that one. Right. Are there still two dragons? By the way. Yes. So uh, we saw because it's a great crash question. down. Right. You know what I mean? It's a John's uh, John's dragon was kind of missing. We saw Drogon, Danny's dragon at the end curled around her. You know, after uh, Sir Jorah had died, the dragon had come by, 
And yeah. uh, that was uh, that was some great when uh, when the Night King brought the storm. You know, I thought that was really that was part of the reason why people had a hard time seeing it, that winter storm. But uh, when the dragons were flying in and out of the storm, they flew up above the storm in the night sky. There were some great shots there, and uh, you know, you, you kept thinking, here comes you know the Night King on the other dragon, you know, you know, right below them trying to take them out and stuff. It got really. Uh, Really intense, and of course, uh, you see that there was nothing more satisfying there than uh, seeing the Night King plummet off the dragon. <laughs> that <laughs> was awesome. Yeah, that was a great scene. Of course, he <laughs> lived through that too. He lived through the dragon fire. You know, it was great. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Greg, uh, I had had it written down here. The remaining questions: uh, John and Danny's armies are weakened. You know, I mean, like they lost like almost every Dothraki they, out of her Kalisar. They lost uh, a lot of Unsullied. Uh, I didn't. I don't remember seeing the Knights of the Veil, vale, but I'm sure they were there, and I'm sure they lost some some folks. The Stark Stark men and the Mormont men. Uh, I'm sure Jon Snow could maybe rally some 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 uh, men from the north, but you got to think that the Dornish are going to support the Targaryens like they have in the past. So that's where Dar- Danny's uh, armies may come from. If maybe we'll are see there some. are there no wildlings left? I mean, right. you, you're you're scraping at the bottom of the barrel right now for <laughs> whatever you can get. I mean, like I said, maybe the Iron Bank army changes hands here, but there isn't. Um, they don't have. They got two dragons, is what they've got, and then they've got Tyrion, who can try to figure out how to flip the script on everybody, and that's somebody else. I'm definitely rooting. So I want to see him make it the whole way through. Right. And uh, he and Sansa had a little moment in the crypts. It was nice to see. Maybe uh, a little uh, uh, redemption there for the two of them. Uh, now, the the one I'm, one remaining question I want to talk about, Shay, is is Jamie. Now that, the, now that this battle's over, everyone's going to turn their attention to Cersei. What is Jamie going to do? Is he going to stick with the Dragon Queen? Or does he go back to Cersei? What do you think Jamie's gonna do? Well, we're hoping because he's made a whole turnaround. He sticks with the the queen. Right. I mean, why would he go back to? I think he's finally realizing what his sister really is. He's got to be a little pissed that uh, you know he he didn't get an army to back him up going up there. It would have been helpful. Uh, uh, Joe, what do you think, Uh, Jamie? uh, What's next for Jamie? You know, I think Jamie's going to complete his his round of re- of redemption here. I think you know, I think he had enough of his sister. I think he was treated like crap and he knows it. You know, he I think deep down he knows that she's lying about the baby even though he doesn't want to admit it. And I think he's going to fight on behalf of the North and and the rest of or I'm sorry, the North, the uh, Danny, the Targaryens, whatever you want to call them, the Ice and Fire twins. <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, I, I think Danny he's, in the North. Yeah, Danny in the North. It sounds like a, a band name or something. But <laughs> but no, I, I really think he's gonna fight for the for for those folks, and I, I really do think he's gonna kill his sister just on his own, not not without you know no Arya, no nothing. I think he's just gonna snap, and you're gonna see a moment of uh, pure torn emotion there. Right now. Uh... We know where Tyrion's loyalty is. We think after uh, after last night, you know, uh, you got to think maybe Jamie and and Brienne are gonna head down to King's Landing together with the rest of uh, Danny and her uh, forces, nah. as uh, they seem to have bonded during this fight. Now, uh, Sam, <laughs> I thought Sam was gonna die for sure. He was kind of like floundering on the ground covered in, he was, in zombies he was crying yeah, yeah. How, how does how does he make right. it out you know did, yeah that was so, that was insanity that was uh had had that was that that was called get the viewer worried for sam scene but uh <laughs> the guy i really want to talk about is bran because uh his story's like almost kind of over uh brandon what do you think uh uh what do you think's next for brandon brandon <laughs> as far as his story, I, I think there's there has to be something more than him saying, "Hey, Theon, I'm out." Like there had to have been something going on there greater than 
than we can imagine for the viewer, right? Like there, there has to be something more than him just sitting there doing nothing. Um, I would, I feel like he's kind of, it's been his story for a while and it wraps me back to, he says he wants me dead to forget the memories, right? Like the memories of everything or the memories of everybody. Right. So there's, there's got to be something behind that. I don't think his stuff is over. I I think there's a good chance he takes over an animal or takes over something in this war that comes up and really makes a difference. Um, flip back to Hodor when he gets into his head and, and takes that over. I, I think there's got to be a greater purpose for him besides saying, hey, I'm out. Take care of this and I'll be back in a little bit. Like... It seems like there's something, there's got to be something more than that to me. That, I, that's what I thought was going to happen last night. I thought he was going to yep. go into the Night King's head. That was what I was Same. waiting for as he walked up all slowly. And mm-hmm. then Arya pops up out of nowhere. And then it's just like your head spinning. But yeah, yep. you're absolutely right. Uh, him going into Hordor, you, you would think he'd retap into that power at some point. It would be kind of weird if that was the last thing. I mean, he did hand Arya the dagger. So that maybe that was his ultimate purpose, but you, you, you'd feel like he's got more cause he's a Stark. Gotta be yeah. something. Yeah. Now, now, uh, he's still, you know, part of the, uh, validation for John's, uh, true heritage along yep. with Sam, who both of them have lived now. Uh, Sam also stole some books from the Citadel. We found out earlier, uh, in episode two, I believe now, uh, those books, I'm really curious about what what books he stole, you know, and I, I think uh, I'm wondering if that's going to show up in the next episodes or the books that Sam stole. Maybe it's validation for John, but uh, John and Danny uh, still have a lot to work out. Uh, we're lucky Sir Davos lived because he I don't think he's told anybody besides Tyrion and Varys about his idea for a marriage proposal. So there's that now. Uh, Melisandre's death kind of she just kind of like walked away and killed herself. I was a little weak, I thought. Uh, Shay, what did you think about uh, Melisandre's death? She kind of like stripped down too at the end too. I was like, but, but she, she was turned old. old. She her was an old lady guy. too. She gave up but the she, ruby necklace. I mean, we saw that scene. When was yeah, that? When I mean, she was her old self. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of like I, I know she, her purpose was done there. Night King was over, and maybe she was you know a thousand years old or something. She was ready to die. But I can't really think of any other explanation. Of, but uh, I would have liked a different death for Melisandre, Joe. <laughs> what, would, what did you think about that final moment? Yeah, I thought it was kind of weak. I was kind of hoping Sir, Sir Davos would just slit her throat or something because of all of the, the burning of the little girl. Because yep. you know, it's he- it's heavy on his mind, and you can tell it is. That was surprising that he did, he let her go. Yeah. And where's, and where's the ghost baby she, she birthed out at some point? <laughs> it might just be a temporary spell but ghost the wolf was in one scene <laughs> we don't know what happened to yeah. him he just was running along he ran I, he went out with sojora i am happy to report I that saw. ghost is still alive yeah. okay good so yeah. i think this is probably what brandon was going to say but in the in the preview for next yes, week sir. they show that ghost is still alive and they show that both dragons are still alive Oh, excellent, excellent. Here's my nice. question to you yeah, guys. Who, who's going to be the one to betray? Is there going to be any more flippers? You know, we everyone's kind of seemed to come together here with the battle against the undead. Is anyone going to flip a, flip back and betray betray one another? Who's that? Who's, it's, who's the high horse for I that? I think it's Tyrion. I think it's Tyrion. Hmm. I'm going to say I'm going to say it's Bronn and he's not going to go through with his Mission, he's gonna I, turn. And, I think and Jenny and I got join up with the boys. Uh, uh, well, who do you think, Janowski? Before I tell you who I think, who do I think is gonna flip? Um, the I mean, the only person at this point, like Sansa, doesn't like Daenerys. Still, yeah, great point. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, she still doesn't like her. She still doesn't think she's a, about the right things. Hmm. If she reminds me a lot of Cersei, so not the evil, twisted, 
that kind of stuff. But her attitude towards everybody else and who she is is Cersei esque. If well, you will, I, I definitely yeah, think playing the game. I mm-hmm. definitely think those two are the ones to keep an eye on, Sansa and and Khaleesi, because they still got their eye on the. They're not like thinking about the big. You still see them having conversations about who's gonna who's gonna rule what the North or the Seven Realms. So it's it, yeah. that is gonna be something to to watch there, at least in my house. Yeah, like, are you gonna leave the North alone? And that that's her biggest concern. And I'm sure Sansa would. Uh, not Sansa, I'm sure, sure Cersei would say, we'll leave the North alone. Not that she'll mean it, but she'd give her that at least to where, yeah, Khaleesi, not going to happen. She, she's all or nothing, man. That's yeah, <laughs> three, uh, three episodes left. There's uh, a lot of uh, speculation uh, and only so much time. But uh, the, uh, the idea about... Uh, uh, John and Danny, they have got a lot of things to work out, Shay. Do you think uh, a Danny pregnancy could uh, bring those two together? What do you think, Shay? John and Danny, a pregnancy. Do you really think they're going to stick together? I don't know. I'm no, I don't think so. Is, 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 is there a relationship shot? John and Danny already? I think so. You think so? That's a big question, guys. Uh Joe, what do you think? John and Danny, any chance of them getting back together? Man, I've been thinking, I've been stewing on this for. It's a huge question. Yeah, I've been stewing on this for the last three episodes, and uh, I, I, I think it can happen. I, I do think they can get back together, and I think, I think it has to do with some one of the two denying their privilege for the throne, right? So whether that's John or that's Daenerys, I think it's for that to work out. One person's got to do that. And I just get the vibe that it's going to be Jon Snow, that he's going to silently not claim his spot. And I think that's what's going to happen. That's my opinion. And I think they're going to end up together to keep the, to keep the about face and to keep, and, and, and keep in mind, you have to think about the fact that Cersei and Jaime had the reputation of being brother and sister that were together and, and, and never officially known, but talk behind the backs. So do Jon and Danny want the same thing? Absolutely not. So I think John silently takes all that information inside, kind of like his fa- well, his his uncle did. It's, it's his father, Ned Stark, silently took this secret and had it and held it within all those years. So I think that's what's going to happen. So Brandon, we've got basically three possible, uh, three big possible endings with John and Danny. John dies, or Danny dies. <laughs> Or they both end up together. Now, George Martin loves his tragedies. The happy ending the viewer wants to see would be John and Danny together on the Iron Throne, which is what everyone wants to see, right, Shay? Happy, uh, happy ever after. I don't think that's happy. Is that Game of Thrones style? No. Not really, Brandon. No. What do you think, Game of Thrones style, happy ever after, or no? I think, kind of to your point, it's seldom that HBO shows end happy. Um, I, I think one's going to go. Either way or, or another, I don't think they're going to give us everything that we want. It would be too predictable. I think it's kind of back to Jon Snow, who, you know, a, a lot of the population thought was going to be the hero. And right. you know, Arya comes through. So I just don't I think they've twisted and turned enough that somebody's got to go. I don't think it can end happily ever after. Uh, one of the other, I think good chance that Jon Snow's going to die. That's my intuition in it. Uh, I think he's going to Of course, die. there's possible, you know, of course yeah. they could both die and there's other things. Tyrion could end up on the throne. Sort of mm-hmm. stuff. But these last three episodes are going to be keeping the viewers like you and I and everybody here in this bar room in mm-hmm. suspense about whether or not we get our happy ever after ending. That's what I think. I'm not what, sure. We'll find what, out. And what we about, have, um, Gendry and Aria with, they just right. had sex and there you go. Yeah, Gendry was, uh, King Baratheon. <laughs> they're, both, they're both still alive. Well, and Gendry yeah. was King Baratheon's bastard son, right? Right. And Arya's a Stark. So that's two houses. Okay. If they had a kid, what does that mean? Right, if John and Danny are dead, that's another possibility. Now that we're still set up for Clegane Bowl too, Joe. Yeah, we still we're still on for that. Now I gotta think we're gonna get that. 
we may not get a happy ever after ending, but we're going to see the hound and the mountain fight. And yes, that's going to be one I think we're going to see in the next three episodes. That's what people want. Uh, if they can't give us a happy mm-hmm. ever ending, they're going to give us that battle. Uh, and I want to thank all my guests. We've reached the end of the show. Thank you so much, Greg, for coming on. I have a stream, man. I hope you had fun. Oh, yeah, this was great. A lot of fun. Follow Greg at Greg Braggs Jr. on Twitter. And uh, yes, Bra- Brandon, thank you for coming on. I have a stream podcast. I hope you had fun. I didn't get too drunk. I didn't check your ID. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> follow uh, Brandon at What's Wolf with an E on the end. <laughs> at What's Wolf on Twitter. Shay, thank you for dropping by as usual. No problem. Thanks for uh, having follow me. Follow Shay at the real Shay Beck on Twitter and my sidekick and wingman, a partner in crime, Joe Mandel at Joe Mandel on Twitter, Joey That's Two right. Scoops. And follow me at Santucci underscore John. Follow I Have a Stream Pod at I Have a Stream Pod on Twitter. As always, subscribe to Bears Barroom Radio. You'll get this show in your stream. Uh, download stream and Joe thanks again how about taking us out with a little television absolutely that's what I do I drink and I know things Uh.